Okay, so it's my first time testing an electrocapacitive keyboard. It's technically not a mechanical keyboard, but it still provides a premium typing experience that's appreciated by keyboard enthusiasts. The main benefits are that you end up with a quieter and smoother switch out of the box, although you get much less options compared to what we usually get with regular mechanical keyboards. I have with me the Plum Atom 66 and 68 electrocapacitive keyboards from Niz, and I'm reviewing them both at once as they're basically the same, minus the difference in layouts. Should you consider the Niz Plum Atom? Well, let's find out. It comes in a brown box that's branded with Niz on top, looks pretty nice. The keyboard is well protected given the design of the box, but also with additional bubble wrap and a plastic dust tray. You get replacement keycaps for Mac, and the 66 variant comes with a 2-unit wide backspace if you want it wider than the default 1-unit key. Finally, you get replacement stabilizer parts, a bag of large springs, a keycaps remover, and a braided Type-C cable. Also worth noting that I have the wired-only versions, and I believe you get a dongle with the Bluetooth variants. Looking at the keyboards, they feature a thick white case with a high profile, hiding the switches, the plastic they use feels high quality, and underneath you get four rubber pads and two sets of flip-out feet, although it feels and sounds like you're breaking the feet when closing the larger set. There is a channel to route the cable on both sides, but it also exits in the middle, where the USB-C port is located. The keyboard has pretty much no flex and feels high quality, and the Atom 66 weights in at around 1.2 pounds or 550 grams, while the 68 variant is 1.3 pounds or 590 grams. In terms of layouts, this is where the Atom 66 and 68 differ mostly. The 68 features what we would call a standard 65% layout. Everything is NC standard, apart from the bottom right modifiers, and the right shift key is one unit narrower although it's pretty easy to find replacement keycaps for this layout. On the other end, the 66 is one column narrower without effectively losing many keys, so it comes with multiple compromises. You have the same non-standard keys as the 68, but also a smaller spacebar. The left side modifiers are also smaller, and you get four keys there instead of the standard three. Then the arrow up key is merged with the right shift key, and finally the backspace is one unit wide to leave room for the tilde key although you can replace these two keys for one standard backspace key. I much prefer the layout on the Atom 68 as it's more standard, and I'm not a fan of the right shift doubling as arrow up, but more on that later. The keycaps themselves are very good, they are quite thick and are made from PBT with die sublimated legends. The contrast is relatively low, especially on the gray keys, but at least these will be durable. They feature a cherry profile, a really appreciated profile by most keyboard enthusiasts. The only downside is that they have a molding mark on one side, but at least it's not visible from any angle you'd use the keyboard. They also feature a standard MX stem mount, so they would work on regular MX style mechanical switches, but even more exciting is that standard keycaps will fit on this keyboard. Speaking of the switches, we've got something special here. So these are similar to Topre switches. I believe they are unbranded clones. Never tried Topre's, so I can't compare, but the TLDR is. These are super smooth and quiet. Electrocapacitive switches use rubber domes, but the quality is much higher than cheap rubber dome switches, as they also use magnets to detect the actuation point. Effectively, these will be more precise than rubber domes, more consistent, and they have a slight tactile feeling. It's not tactile like a mechanical switch in my view, but there is a very smooth bump when the switch travels down. I don't think you'll end up not bottoming down the switches either, especially at 35 grams. Another exciting perk of the electrocapacitive switches is that you can adjust the actuation point. On the Atom 66, that's with right function plus 7, and on the Atom 68, that's with function plus quote. You get three settings, ranging from needing to bottom out the keys to only pressing halfway. It is a very comfortable typing experience, and the sound rivals some of the best tuned mechanical keyboards. Even the stabs sound great out of the box, no rattle at all. And these are coster style stabs, and they're factory lubed with a ton of lube, so probably why they sound great. It's also possible to add springs between the keycaps and switches. I believe that's meant to increase the force required to type. It probably creates a 10 gram difference or something like that. I felt like it made the switch a tad bit more scratchy to the feel, although the sound seemed unaffected.
While the versions I have of the Niz Plum Atom are wired only, it's worth noting that a Bluetooth version exists as well, although it is considerably more expensive. Given that these are smaller keyboards, you get additional layers built in for the missing keys. One cool feature is the mouse control capability. You can use the WASD area and around to navigate and click, and you can even change the speed of the cursor on board with function plus Q. One important thing to note is that these layers can be edited and the Atom 66 has two layers accessible with the left and right function keys, while the Atom 68 only has a single function layer. For the Atom 66, you can change the setting of the right shift key on board so that it's always shift, always arrow up, or a mix of both. The latter option acts as shift if a second key is pressed within 700 millisecond. Otherwise, if no keys are hit or if it's held down, it acts as an arrow key. I found it a bit too easy to hit shift and stop typing where it would end up registering as an arrow up key, hence why I prefer the layout of the 68. You can also lock the Windows key, switch between the Mac and Windows layouts, and swap caps lock and left control. Otherwise, most of the key combos with function are meant to access missing keys like the function row and navigation keys. To access the program mode, you need to press function plus the circled M key character, so that's tilde on the 68 and plus on the 66. Then, a Windows-only software allows to change the main layer, but also additional function layers. So to wrap this up, here are my final thoughts. I think this is a really unique keyboard, and the electrocapacitive switches are a different beast, not comparable to any mechanical switch I've tried in the past. I would recommend this keyboard if you're in the market for a compact electrocapacitive keyboard, not because it's amazing necessarily, but because the selection is very limited. On top of mine, another option is the HHKB, but it's way more expensive. But don't get me wrong, it's a really great keyboard, the remapping options are quite extensive, the stabilizers are pretty much perfect out of the box, and the switches are super smooth. I also like that you can easily replace keycaps as the switches use MX stems, maybe an advantage compared to genuine Topre switches. And if you go with the Atom 68, the layout it has is super common, so it won't be hard to find replacement keycaps. So that wraps it up for today. As always, I'll have affiliate links to these keyboards down below. Feel free to use them if you're interested and want to support the channel at the same time. So thanks for watching, make sure you leave a like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'll see you in a future video.